When the Game Boy was released in Japan in 1989, Nintendo wanted their mascot to be part of the launch, and, alongside the hardware, Super Mario Land was put into development. The Game Boy's inventor, Gunpei Yokoi, who had previously worked on Nintendo's Game & Watch series, led development of the game alongside Satoru Okada. They had previously worked together on Metroid and Kid Icarus. The game was due to be the bundle pack until Tetris was decided to be a better fit for a portable game console. This, in hindsight, was a fantastic business move by Nintendo. Launching on the 21st of April 1989 in Japan, in July 89 in America, and in the year after, on September 28, 1990, yes, that was 30 years ago, Super Mario Land is a side-scrolling platform game. This was released some five years after the original on the Nintendo Entertainment System, but it does borrow a lot of the same elements. First, the plot of the game. Princess Daisy, who makes her debut in this game, has been kidnapped by the evil spaceman Tatanga, and instead of the Mushroom Kingdom, Mario has to travel to Saras Land to save her. Split over 12 levels, you jump, shoot and fly, and more on this later, on your way to rescue her. You move from left to right, and then once you've progressed you can't go back. There are various power-ups to help you, familiar to those who have played Mario before. You can collect a mushroom to grow, a star for invincibility, a heart gives you extra life, and a flower enables you to fire fireballs. These fireballs are different from in the original game as you can use them to collect coins. They also deflect off objects until they fly off the screen, and only one can be on screen at any one time. Collecting 100 coins awards you an extra life. As usual, there are secret pipes you can go down which reveal layers of coins for you to go and collect. At the end of every stage, you can either enter the bottom door, which takes you straight to the next level, or attempt to enter the more difficult top door. This enters you into a mini game where you can get extra lives or power ups to help you on the way. One difference in this game is in levels 2, 3, and 4, 3. You control a submarine or a plane and enter an R type shoot em up section. The level auto scrolls, so be sure not to get caught behind any obstacles or stuck anywhere. It's a nice fun element and a change in gameplay from the usual platform. There are returning familiar baddies, the Goombas and the Koopas, although in this game the Koopa shells explode instead of being kickable. Each world has its own identifiable enemies for you to jump on or shoot and defeat to get to the end of the levels. At the end of every third level you face an end of world boss, just like with Bowser in the previous NES outings. You can either choose to shoot him or you can avoid him and hit the switch at the end of the palace to finish him off. However, and as usual, the princess is in another castle. You continue all the way through until you defeat the cloud boss at the end of 4-3. You then face off against Tatanga. It's easy enough to defeat as long as you watch the fireballs instead of the enemy himself. Then, when completed, you are reunited with Daisy and a nice end credit sequence follows. Once you complete the game upon restarting, you replay the same game but at a much harder difficulty, with more enemies and harder gameplay. If you manage to complete it again, you are rewarded with a level select screen. Quite challenge. The graphics make amazing use of the Game Boy's limitations, the backgrounds in this level in particular are a testament to this. You can clearly see the enemies and your sprites, and you can see why Nintendo wanted this game to be a launch title. The music is fantastic, indeed with level 1 being sampled as a single for a chart hit back in the 1990s. Have a listen to each world's individual songs, and I'm sure you'll understand what I mean.
This game is a brilliant little platformer, albeit a bit short. It spawned two sequels on the Game Boy, which we'll cover at a later date. However, this is a standalone game sold over 18 million copies, which is more than Super Mario Bros. 3 on the NES. There's no doubt you have probably played this game yourself, and I'm sure you'll agree it's just one of those games that everyone has to complete at least once. That's it for now. Thanks for watching this episode of News Games Review. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.